Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about our UI manager as it stands and make a couple of changes to really improve things. To explain why we're doing this, I'm going to go ahead and go into the scenes, world, and then UI manager script. And I'm going to double click the UI manager script to open it in my IDE. And we're going to take a look at this guy to kind of understand why some changes are necessary. Now, looking at how this functions as it is, we've got some fields that contain the text objects that we need from our UI, as well as the game object menu. We're doing our awake, which is great, making sure our assertions are there so that we don't have any null values. But what we need to change up are these functions. So the public void update level, the public void update XP, and the public void toggle menu. Looking at these functions, they're very, very reactive. They're only going to get called when they're requested specifically, which there are some benefits to that approach. First and foremost, it saves logic on every call. The way that we are about to set this up can be a little costly as far as efficiency goes, but I just feel it's a better fit for our use case. If we set this class up, to update everything, every frame, then that's an extra set of calls that need to be made every frame that don't necessarily have to be there. So in memory intensive situations where you're already pushing the limits of the hardware that you intend your game to be on, setting this up in what's called a functional manner can be a real benefit and can save you a lot of computing power that you don't need to be wasting especially if you have a bunch of UI elements. This leads into the second reason that setting it up this way can be useful. That is, it's more controlled. We know that the level and the XP texts are only going to be updated when we say so. And if we had, say, 30 more UI elements that we were handling from this controller, then we could individually handle each and every one and not have to update all of the others just because one item updated. So more control is usually good. And that's another reason why we'd maybe want to use what we've got set up, which in and of itself is another reason to use this. It follows the idea of encapsulation. So again, if I call update level, it's only going to update the level text. It's only going to interact with that. And if there were some heavy logic behind it, it would save a lot of operating power a lot of computing speed, and lighten the load a lot on your user's hardware and possibly the end user experience. That's why I wanted to show you guys this from the very beginning, is this is another way that's very valid to set up a UI. It's doable, it's not hard to do, and it's not uncommon for high-end games to set up their UI managers like this. But it's important to remember that there's a tool for every job and for the kind of game that we're making here, it's not going to be too much intense work for everything to be set up the way that we want. It's not going to be too much work for it to go ahead and update every cycle. And there are some benefits to that as well. The drawbacks to the current UI manager setup that we have here are it's not really real time. Functions can call and they'll immediately update the UI. But what if somewhere along the way we forget to make the call to the update level function? Or even worse, what if it's being misused and we completely forget? What if it's being misused and we pass in the absolute wrong value? What if we add more than one player or we add statuses to the player? Then we need to make calls to the UI manager and make sure that everything is hooked up from whatever components we are interacting with. And that's the other side of the encapsulation then those components are tied to this UI manager, and there's really no need for, him, for them to be. These are the kinds of decisions that we make as game developers, and we really need to consider what we're doing before we implement these kinds of systems and make sure that it's what we want to do. The style of programming being used here, it's considered to be a lighter form of what's known as functional programming, where components are abstracted as much as possible so that no matter what you pass in, you always get the exact same result. And that's a deep and complicated subject of its own. So we're just going to leave it at that for now. What we want to do here is not type in an extra F. 
we want to focus more on an object-oriented solution since that's the paradigm that we're using here. To basically sum up, we just want this UI manager to be doing its own thing and not to have to have any other components, any other classes worry about it, other than, say, a game manager or a scene manager that might have a vested interest in this. Because with the example of the player class, the player doesn't need to display its level to function. It doesn't need to display or let anyone know how much XP it has for it to function in and of itself. So why should it care about the UI manager? The answer is it doesn't need to. So what we're going to do instead is we are going to utilize the game manager that we created in the last video, and we're going to set this up so that it goes through that, finds the current player, and updates according to its stats. The player doesn't even have to know that that's going on. Doing so is super simple, and it's only going to take us a minute. So let's do that now. In the update level function, we're going to remove this parameter that's required, and we're going to take out this whole line of text. But before we can update this, we need to add one parameter to our player class because we never set a getter for the level because we were expecting to pass it in. So let's head back to Unity and switch to our player script. I'm just going to go to the models folder. and down into the player. So models, player, scripts, and then the player script. I'm going to double click that to open it in my IDE. And you'll notice we have this lowercase LVL, which by default is set to one. Let's go to the bottom of our list of getters. And we're going to add one more. We're going to say public int with a lowercase i, LVL. And we're going to say get brackets return LVL lowercase. Perfect. Now we've got our getter. So let's save that and we'll head back to Unity and then back over to our UI manager. So back in Unity, scroll down to the UI Manager script, and I'm going to double-click that to open it. And we're going to go back to this update level function. Now, we're going to replace this with level text dot text equals game manager dot instance with a capital I dot current player dot lvl dot to string because if you remember the level was an integer and in this case we need it in string format next we'll head down to this update xp function we'll again take out the parameters and we're going to leave this xp text dot text equals but we're going to take out the right hand side of the function and we're going to replace it with game manager dot instance dot current player dot xp plus quotation mark space slash space and quotation mark plus game manager dot instance dot current player dot required xp then we'll close that out with a semicolon awesome now that that's done we need to add one more thing to make this work. Let's add private void update. So just the standard Unity update function. And then from here, we're just going to call everything that we want updated. So call update level and call update XP. And we're done. Now the cool thing is, if we go back to Unity, We can press play on our project, and we'll finally see some of that sweet, sweet UI action. So let me bring this size up a little bit so you can see better. And we're going to press play, and we expect to see the experience change and the level change. 
So press play. And as you can see, our player who by default is level one with zero experience, now has a level one in this badge, zero experience, and a required experience of 100. So perfect. Our UI is now fully reactive, it's ready to go, and it's updating every frame. Great job. And now that we've had something call our game manager.instance, we can also see in our project hierarchy, in the don't destroy on load section, down here, we've got our loader with the game manager script, which means that that game manager is now going to be there forever on until the game stops. So let's go ahead and stop running this. And it's been a while since we updated, so let's save our project, go up to collab, and I'm going to update this and say updated UI manager added game manager and added loader to main game scene. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and publish. And we're done. So great job following along. Now you've learned a little bit more about UI managers, how they operate, and the differences and why you may want to choose one style over the other. We've now got a fully working level badge with the level and experience to show the actual value of our current player as opposed to the static numbers we just had there before. So again, awesome job following along. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.